So today I'm going to be testing the new shading assist feature in Clip Studio Paint version 2.0. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Kat, I'm a motion graphics animator, and I'm creating a fantasy webcomic called The Dreadcast Realm, which you can find on Webtoon and Global Comics. So when I saw previews for Clip Studio Paint 2.0, the one that excited me the most was the automatic shading feature. Shading is something I've always kind of struggled with, so having an automatic option, especially as someone who creates comics, sounded extremely convenient. So I already had the EXX version, whatever it's called. So the upgraded 2.0 was about $40 for a one-time payment. The reason I'm making this video is I want to see if this is something that A actually works, B is worth it, and C will overall be quicker than shading manually for my comic. I have three different tests, a side profile, a full body with a lot of details, and a two-thirds profile to see how the shading is going to work on every face angle. I also did some rough shading, like how I usually would, so we can see a before and after of how they compare. There's this light source. <laughs> okay, right off the bat, something really weird happened. So here is the first test, and right here on this multiply layer that I did not name, um, was the original shading, right? So I turned that off. You hit a folder if you want to shade everything in the folder. Uh, if I wanted to just shade the hair, I would just select the hair, but we're going to select the folder because we want everything in the folder. Edit. Where was it? Shading assist. Wait for that to pop up. And even though preview is selected here, nothing's happening. But when I move this, the multiply layer off of it, and then I try it again, it's previewing, but whatever. All right, so let's get into this. First of all, <laughs> we're on standard and cell shading. If it pops up and it looks like this, and you wanna know how to edit it, you just hit these plus buttons right here on light source and shading and you can control how much shadow and how much light goes on right here and you can also change the colors and then how you want them to apply and they have different options so we could do like night scene this panel takes place at night so technically it would be this one that doesn't look bad i see some like small issues um, the main thing I'm noticing is how weirdly chunky it looks right here. If we shade this to smooth shading, here's what it looks like. Okay, here's another weird issue. So, do you see these little lines in his hair? Eli has a gradient on his hair. Which you can kind of see in the cell shading, but not really. Um, if I remove that gradient... it changes eyebrow color if I remove the gradient and add it in after I do the automatic shading it won't be an issue so automatic shading does not like gradients noted all right let's apply that shading again it takes a hot minute but that's okay put it back where the light source is and I'll change it to night again Change it from ball light, direction light, that's pretty nice. Not bad. Okay. Let's just hit okay. Alright. So what that does is it creates those layers right above your source. And you could also go in and smooth them out. But let's do another test. Okay, test number two. This is full body front facing but there's a lot of details and we're gonna see if that's going to mess with the automatic shader or not here's the original shading I'm gonna move that out of the way because apparently it doesn't like that and let's go I'm gonna get my reference Sun back up again so I know where to put it 
I swear I usually label my layers, but this was just like an experiment, so I wasn't putting that much effort into it. Don't judge me. Okay, edit. Shading assist. Let's go. Okay, doesn't look like the details are affecting it, so that's good. Let's change it to standard. Oh, I, I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh. That kind of looks pretty, but it's that's definitely not how light works. Coming from someone who kind of sucks at shading, but... Let's change this to smooth shading, see how that looks. It's kind of pretty. But I added these folds in here dress because... Oh yeah, see? Weird details again there would be more shadow where the dress folds. Let's change this back to standard cell shading and let's play around with the colors for a little bit. This a golden light. Whoa. Okay, never mind. So this must be the highlight color. I don't like how that light is hitting the hair. I swear before when I was playing this, I saw an option for it to focus on, yeah, right here, refer to lines on reference layer. There was a way I could select that before. Okay. All right, and here, here's the line art. Maybe if I put the lighthouse icon, I don't remember what that's called. But if I put the lighthouse icon on that, will it let me use that as a reference layer? And will that make it better? Loading, loading, loading. Okay. Oh, yep, see so it automatically selected that. Okay, so you need the lighthouse button for it to reference the lines. Ooh. Standard. Okay. Yeah, okay, her hair already looks way better with the reference layer selected. Okay, yeah, that it's definitely looking better, but the details are definitely messing with it. If we just had like flat colors, this would probably look a lot better, but I put details because I wanted to see what would happen if you had details. Now we're gonna try a two-third, and we have to move this shading again, because it does not like that for some reason. All right, and let's put the lighthouse on the line art so we can reference that. Edit, shading assist. I like how it remembers where to go and like the settings that it was on before. Okay. That looks pretty good, actually. I mean, other than like the chunkiness, which you can go in and adjust, but the face looks pretty good. Like it has that little highlight under the eye. The nose feels a little weird. I don't think there would be light here, but it looks good on the lip and the chin. And there's even some right above the eye. That looks pretty good. I created a comic, but I'm not great when it comes to shading, which I've said multiple times. So correct me if I'm wrong, wouldn't the shadow be under the arm and not above the arm, even though her arm is going up, if the light is coming from this, this direction? I don't know. Someone wiser than me, please give me your thoughts and advice. Does this look good? What looks weird? I think the face looks pretty good, but I'm a little confused on parts of the body. I don't know, would love some thoughts. Okay, so we did that. Let's compare the befores and afters. Overall thoughts, I need to play with this a little bit more before I decide if this is something I would want to implement in my comic, because I don't know if this is gonna take more or less time than like actually shading it by hand. It'll probably take less time, but then how long would it take to make all the adjustments by hand to make it like smooth? And to make it more accurate, would that take just as much time as actually shading it by hand? And would it look better? 
What do you think? Did it look better with the shading assist? Did it look more accurate with the shading, shading assist feature? I don't know. Would love your thoughts. But thank you for joining me on this journey of playing with the new 2.0 shading assist feature. I think it's really cool. I hope it gets a little better, but I think it's a good start. What do you think?